Nixon's visit to China, as mentioned above, was a superb event that had a destabilizing effect on the world situation, but during the period from 1,972 to 1,977, when Jimmy Carter came to power, although economic and trade exchanges between China and the United States began to become more frequent, there was no substantial progress in the establishment of diplomatic relations, and the U.S. attitude was suddenly less positive. What happened? In fact, it was necessary to begin with the Sino-U.S.-Soviet Triangle, May 22, 1,972. After the conclusion of the visit, Nixon went to the Soviet Union. Not long after Nixon went to the Soviet Union without stopping because of the fear of China and the United States to further unite Boniface, finally made concessions on the restriction of nuclear arms ban on the United States, and the Soviet Union signed the first phase of the agreement on the limitation of strategic arms. Nixon used the force to fight force in the Taiwan issue, without substantial concessions, to the circumstances of the small victory in diplomacy against the Soviet Union. But just as the Nixon and Bidios attempts to re-election in June of 1972, when Watergate broke out, Nixon stepped down in disgrace and his promise to complete the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States in his second term of office was aborted. The new President Ford, under the influence of the Watergate scandal, became more conservative in Sino-U.S. relations, coupled with strong resistance from pro-Taiwanese forces in the Congress, and thus created obstacles to the issue of Taiwan. In February 1974, the United States again dispatched the so-called ambassador to Taiwan, and then, in March 1973, asked the Chinese to cancel the Chinese art troops' visit to the United States, which was to be held at the Chinese embassy in Beijing. In March 1973, the U.S. asked the Chinese side to cancel one of the songs in the preparatory program of the Chinese art troops' visit to the U.S. The U.S. then announced the indefinite postponement of the art troops' visit. This series of factors led to the fact that no substantial progress was made in the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the U.S. During the era of Deng Xiaoping and Jimmy Carter, it wasn't until then that diplomatic relations between the U.S. and China and the handling of the issue of Taiwan were reintroduced to the agenda because of the most important background of the Soviet Union's victorious power in the mid to late 1970s. The Soviet Union's military power reached its peak in the mid-1970s, and the United States was under great pressure. When Carter came to power, the main line of Carter's foreign policy was still to seek detente with the Soviet Union, especially to reach a start II treaty with the Soviet Union to ease the increasingly breathless arms race. So against this background, relations with China had to be subordinate to relations with the Soviet Union. As long as detente was succeeded in detenting relations with the USSR, then China's value in the strategy of counterbalancing Soviet Union's threat would be greatly reduced. Therefore, the attitude of the United States at this stage was characterized by a clear sense of uncertainty and double bargaining. In August 1977, Secretary of State Vance visited China and met with Deng Xiaoping and proposed three conditions for the establishment of diplomatic relations between the United States and China. China China had to make a commitment to refrain from the use of force on the issue of Taiwan either openly or tacitly. The liaison office between China and the United States was upgraded to an embassy, while the so-called U.S. Embassy in Taiwan was downgraded to a liaison office. In response to this unreasonable request, Deng did not instigate on the spot, but rather inhaled a cigarette calmly and then rejected the U.S. attempt to set foot in two boats with a calm and unquestionable tone. If we want to solve the problem, it would be a matter of three abrogations, withdrawal of troops, and severance of diplomatic relations. Deng's strong stance has made the U.S. realize that it is not possible to make China make a commitment to renounce force. The USSR also gave a timely assist to Carter's high hopes for the START Treaty, delayed progress the Soviet Union took advantage of this time to step up its global expansion, Cuba, Angola, Ethiopia, Afghanistan, South Yemen, one after another. This time, Carter kicked his cold ass, realizing that he had to immediately make a breakthrough in relations with China to counterbalance the Soviet Union. So in the second half of 1978, China and the USSR made a breakthrough in relations with China. So in the second half of 1978, the USSR made a breakthrough in relations with China. In the second half of 1978, the agenda for the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States suddenly accelerated the US on the issue of Taiwan, also immediately lowered the price to fully accept the three conditions put forward by Mr. Deng. After more than five months of difficult negotiations on December 16, 1978, the United States and China issued a joint communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations between the United States and the United States of America communique. The communique, apart from the statement of the opposition to hegemony in the crucial issue of a China, the U.S. statement is as follows. The United States of America recognizes the government of the People's Republic of China as the sole lawful government of China. And within this framework, the people of the United States will maintain cultural, commercial, and other unofficial relations with the people of Taiwan. The United States of America recognizes China's position that there is only one China and that Taiwan is a part of China and declares that the two countries will mutually recognize each other as of January 1, 1979, and that they will enter into diplomatic relations on the first day of March when they will send ambassadors to each other and set up embassies. The establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States was a major event that rewrote the international landscape of the 20th century, especially on the crucial issue of one China. The joint communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States was a clear acknowledgement by the United States compared to the ambiguous statement in the previous China-US joint communique that the United States had announced the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. The announcement of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States was undoubtedly a bolt from the blue for Taiwan. Jiang Qingkuo was so angry that he cursed me, and the United States have been friends for so many years, how could you notify me only seven and a half hours in advance? Taiwan society was also abuzz with the public from devastation to hatred for two days in a row. In Taiwan, there was an unprecedented anti-U.S. demonstration. Crowds of people protesting in the so-called U.S. embassy in front of the American flag was burned, as were the cars on Daiki, 17, the U.S. Under Secretary of State Christopher arrived in Taipei to handle the severance of relations. Christopher arrived in Taipei to deal with the break in diplomatic relations, and the motorcade was mobbed by protesters as soon as it pulled out of the airport after a welcome meal of greasy chicken and eggs for ten. Someone approached Christopher in his car and then gave him a hard Taipei iron fist punch to the face. The beating lasted half an hour and ended only when security guards dispersed the crowds. 
The wheel of history rolls forward, but because of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the US, is not the only one who panicked. Taiwan, remember the last episode of Vietnam after the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the US. The first thing to do is to fight in self-defense against the Vietnamese because, at the same time as China and the US close to the Soviet Union also played the Vietnam card in November 1978, Vietnam and the USSR, with the nature of the mutual assistance pact, with the nature of the military alliance in the Soviet Union, with a large military aid, Vietnam's ambitions to dominate Southeast Asia. In December of the same year, Vietnam invaded Cambodia, so the big powers have their own backyard. Central America is the backyard of the United States. Central Asia is the backyard of the Soviet Union. Backyard does not necessarily have to be the same as the big powers, but must not allow the emergence of a regional power that can challenge them. Otherwise, the big powers will be very passive, tolerate, it can be tolerated. Deng Deng visited the United States as soon as the establishment of diplomatic relations between the United States and the United States of America. After the establishment of diplomatic relations, the most important task of the mission was to inform Carter that China was about to launch a military strike against Vietnam. Carter, that China was about to launch a military strike against Vietnam and asked the US to support China. Next, let's go back to the main issue of Taiwan, although the joint communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the US has made a big step forward in resolving the Taiwan issue. It still leaves an outstanding key issue of why the arms sales to Taiwan have not been resolved as a package. In fact, on Decon 15, 1978, less than a day before the release of the communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations between the United States and the US representative Woodcock, suddenly met with Deng Xiaoping to make it clear that the fact that the US did not sell arms to Taiwan in 1979 did not mean that the US would never sell arms to Taiwan and hoped that China would not misunderstand why such an important issue had not been raised until the very last minute. In Woodcock's previous meeting with Deng Xiaoping, he had mentioned that the US-Taiwan Mutual Defense Treaty was about to expire by the end of 1979 and that he hoped to change the termination of the treaty from abrogation to termination. Deng Xiaoping agreed but asked the US to guarantee that it would not sell arms to Taiwan. During this year, the US also agreed, but this sowed a misunderstanding. We thought that since the mutual defense treaty had expired, the US could not sell arms to Taiwan, but the US insisted that after the establishment of diplomatic relations, it would continue to sell arms to Taiwan. There's a lot of evidence in the information we found, which suggests that the US is intentionally trying to smoke and blur the issue. Cloth bomb fuzzy treatment, then this is the key moment to determine the success or failure of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States. At this time, China is about to reform and open up with the United States to establish diplomatic relations with the United States to obtain capital market technology is crucial. Deng Gong, from the long-term interests of the country, to consider the overall situation, decided to shelve this issue or the establishment of diplomatic relations according to the original plan. But the problem is not over to continue to talk about the issue of China is resolutely opposed to this issue of the pending issue of arms sales to Taiwan and therefore become the most important obstacle to diplomatic relations after the two countries quickly changed. After the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries, the biggest obstacle to the relationship between the two countries soon occurred a real idea on the issue of Taiwan. Soon after the communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States issued a number of members of the US Congress, some of the Green Taiwan has continued to create public opinion on the issue of Taiwan on March 13. 1979, the establishment of diplomatic relations between the US and China in just over three months of the US Senate and the US Senate and the Senate voted on and passed the Act of Relations with Taiwan, which Carter himself had to personally sign into effect the Act of Relations with Taiwan, which made the United States of America Taiwan as one of the political entity and provides that the decision of the United States to establish diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China is based on the expectation that Taiwan's future will be resolved through peaceful means. Any effort to determine Taiwan's future by non-peaceful means, including boycotts or embargoes, constitutes a threat to the peace and security of the Western Pacific region and is of serious concern to the United States. Any resort to force that threatens the security of the people of the Western Pacific region and is of serious concern to the United States. Any resort to force or other forms of coercion that would jeopardize the security or socio-economic system of the people of Taiwan. The content of this article is very awkward to translate, but it is not difficult to see the theme of the act to deal with the issue of Taiwan in accordance with US domestic law. The nature of the act is a gross interference in China's internal affairs. Then the Ministry of Foreign Affairs note to the US government to condemn the US adoption of the act on relations with Taiwan. If we link the US previous statements, we will find that this act seems to be inconsistent and give the double standard of selling weapons to Taiwan and emphasizing the need for a peaceful solution is actually not contradictory because all of this is in the service of US national interests. The US wants to keep Taiwan in such a state of disunity to ensure that US interests are maximized. When the threat of the Soviet Union grows, it will press Taiwan to curry favor with China. When the threat of the Soviet Union grows, it will maintain a flexible moral line at all times to move in and out of the situation with the Taiwan Relationship Act as laid a landmine in the US-China relationship. Reagan came to power and pursued a dual-track policy with two feet on the one hand. He continued to develop normal relations with China, while on the other hand, he continued to strengthen substantive relations with Taiwan, sending a delegation to visit Taiwan to plan the sale of advanced F-16 fighters to Taiwan. It should be known that it was 1,981 when our most advanced fighters were still the old J-8 and J-82, which were all still being developed. The US believed that, at this point in time, China was facing a threat from the USSR in the north to the United States, believed that China was facing a threat from the Soviet Union in the north, and that by further relaxing its arms exports to China, it would be able to obtain China's acquiescence to continued US arms sales to Taiwan. However, China objected and reported that it would rather not have U.S. arms than U.S. arms sales to Taiwan, and that this was a matter of principle. The U.S. series of actions infuriated Deng Xiaoping, and in the meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Haig, he made it clear that there was a limit to what could be tolerated by us.
China asked the United States to make a clear commitment to sell weapons to Taiwan within a specified period of time in terms of performance and quantity, not to exceed the level of the Carter period, the United States to make a clear commitment to sell weapons to Taiwan within the same period of time will be reduced year by year to the eventual termination of the but during the negotiations, the United States is still making small gestures, not only announce the sale of weapons parts to Taiwan to the continued cooperation in the production of the F5E fighter negotiation. The fundamental reason for the impasse is that the U.S. is not willing to commit to a gradual reduction or even the termination of arms sales to Taiwan for a period of time, but also to link the resolution of the issue of arms sales to Taiwan with the level of military tension in the Taiwan Strait, and to make the peaceful resolution of the Taiwan issue a prerequisite for the resolution of the issue of U.S. sales to Taiwan. The U.S. wants to see that China makes a commitment to the issue of Taiwan not to use force, and then only to commit to the cessation of the sale of arms, and ultimately the sale of arms. After arduous negotiations on August 17, 1982, the two sides issued the August 17 communique, in which the U.S. stated the following on the core issue of arms sales to Taiwan. The U.S. does not seek to carry out a long-term policy of selling arms to Taiwan, and the arms it sells to Taiwan, in terms of both performance and quantity, will not exceed the level of arms supplied by the U.S. and China in the past few years since the establishment of diplomatic relations, and it is prepared to gradually reduce its arms sales to Taiwan over time until a final settlement is reached. This paragraph is still very difficult to understand. This still very awkward expression, as in the past, carries out the U.S. technique of not stating the obvious how long is a period of time until the final solution, when exactly will it be? In short, the U.S. has always retained the right to decide on the next step in the light of the development of the situation, although the U.S. and the Chinese sides do not agree on the interpretation of the OG. 17 communique, this communique has not yet resolved the issue of the U.S. sale of weapons to Taiwan, but it is, after all, a solution to the problem on behalf of the two countries and has set a correct direction as a solution. The Sino-U.S. joint communique and the August 17th communique, together with the joint communique on the establishment of diplomatic relations, have become the foundation of Sino-U.S. relations, which is why China has repeatedly stated and emphasized these communiques when there were exchanges and clashes between China and the United States over the issue of Taiwan. What you said, even if the car doesn't fall off the ground, must still be counted on. Then the main task of the establishment of the diplomatic relations of the United States and the People's Republic of China has been accomplished at last, although it is not a perfect one, but it is a good one, insofar as the situation at that time was concerned. Although not perfect, but in terms of the situation at the time, to deal with the threat of the Soviet Union is the most important is the main conflict from the later history of the establishment of diplomatic relations between China and the United States to bring benefits, both from the perspective of national defense and security and scientific and technological development and economic construction point of view of China, has benefited greatly only four decades to rapidly rise to the world's second largest economy. The people's standard of living has improved dramatically. Scientific and technological advances in the huge national defense has a very solid material foundation. All, these, all of these rely on why visionary and decisive decision-making. Of course, things are not over. The Taiwan issue of this lesion still exists, and often episodes so that the U.S.-China relationship is sometimes low fever and sometimes high fever. Taiwan itself has been profoundly affected by the next. We will turn our attention to the Taiwan to bring you more of Taiwan's past events.